Okay, so in this video, we're going to be talking about polynomial division. So imagine you have a fraction, but instead of numbers, we have polynomials. So for this example, we have a cubic, and we're trying to divide it by a linear term. So the way we do this, it's kind of similar to long division, but it's slightly different. So we're going to start off by writing our polynomial. I'm just going to rewrite it. So we have x cubed plus 6x squared plus 8x plus 3. And then thinking to uh, long division, we draw the symbol like this. And then we write what we're dividing by on the left side of this, so x plus 1 here. So in normal division, we take this whole term here and we try to divide it into each term and see what we're left with. We can't actually divide x plus 1 into x cubed straight away. So what we do is we look at the leading term. So we just look at the x term and we're going to divide x cubed by x. And then we're left over with x squared. And now because we haven't included the plus 1, we kind of need to balance the books. So the way we do that is we take uh, our answer up here and we multiply it by the thing we're dividing by. So we multiply x squared by x plus 1. So I just write it down here. This comes out to be x cubed plus x squared. And it's good when you're doing this to line up um, the x cubes, the x squareds, etc., just to make it a bit clearer what's happening. So this is uh, what we got when you multiplied x squared by x plus 1. And now the second step is to subtract this from our original polynomial. So we subtract this, I'm going to write a minus sign here, from the top line. So let me just draw a line to show the subtraction. And when we do that, the x cubes cancel out, and we're left with 5x squared. And this stuff just drops down because we haven't changed it, plus 3. So this is kind of the whole idea. We've managed to eliminate the, the highest power here. And this is because we just looked at the leading term, and then we kind of balanced everything. So now we can just iterate this process. We can just get rid of the x squares and then the x's, and then we'll see what we're left with. So now let's do the same strategy. Let's look at the leading term, x again, and we divide 5x squared by x. So if we do that, we just get 5x. So that's the second term in our answer. And now, as before, we need to multiply this back with what we're dividing by to see what we're left with. So 5x times x plus 1, that is 5x squared plus 5x. And again, think about this step. We need to subtract this from our previous line. So you can write brackets here and a minus sign. And then we need to perform this subtraction. So again, the leading term cancels. 5x squared is a cancel. And we're left with, we're left with 3x plus 3. So again, one more time. We want to get rid of the x's now. We divide x by 3x and we're left with 3. This is just a constant. And then again, uh, we multiply this 3 by x, three, um, x plus 1, sorry. So this gives us 3x plus 3, which is perfect because when we subtract this from the previous line, it just cancels. We're left with 0. Now, since we have a 0 remainder, this actually tells us that x plus 1 divides perfectly into this polynomial, into this cubic. And in fact, this fraction is going to be equal to exactly our answer up here. So I'll write it here. It tells us that this ratio of these two polynomials is equal to this quadratic, so x squared plus 5x plus 3. So that's how to divide two polynomials. And in fact, we can think about this slightly differently. If I multiply up the x plus 1 on the bottom, it tells us a way to factorize this cubic. So it's actually told us that x cubed plus 6x squared plus 8x plus 3, this equals x plus 1. Just multiplying this up times the answer we got. So times x squared plus 5x plus 3. So this way of dividing has actually told us how to factorize this cubic. And since we've got a zero remainder, it factorizes perfectly. We're actually going to look at another example now where the remainder isn't zero, and we'll see how this translates to how this translates to the, the answer here. So I'm just going to wipe the board and then we'll look at that now. Okay, so now for our second example, it's kind of a similar problem. We have a cubic and we want to divide this by a linear term. So maybe give this a try yourself to make sure you understand the method. I'm just going to start it over here. So again, we're going to write out uh, the numerator, the cubic, which is x cubed plus 4x squared minus 3x plus 2. And then we draw the symbol that we're dividing and we're dividing it by x plus 5. So let's use our method. We take the leading term here which is just x, and we divide it by the leading term of this polynomial. So x cubed divided by x, that's just x squared. And then we need to balance um, what's left over. So we multiply 
the x squared by this term, which gives us x cubed plus 5x squared. And then uh, we subtract this from the line above, which means that the highest power is going to cancel. So if we do the subtraction, we're going to be left with minus x squared minus 3x plus 2. So let's carry on. It's essentially the same process again. We look at this term now. So we divide minus x squared by x, and this gives us minus x. And then we need to multiply this by this bracket. So we have minus x squared minus 5x. And now we need to be careful because we need to subtract this. And this is why I like to put brackets here. So we make sure we keep tracks uh, of the minus signs. So we're going to subtract this term. And these are going to be double minuses. So that we're going to add them on. And again, the x squared, they cancel. And now we have minus 3x plus 5x, which comes out as plus 2x. And also the constant up here, plus 2, it just falls down. So this is our third line. We've got 2x plus 2. And again, one more time. To get rid of the x terms, we just divide 2x by x, which gives us the answer of 2. So we write 2 up here. And then we need to multiply 2 by this term, which gives us 2x plus 10. And now we subtract this. And we actually see um, our remainder is not 0. It's going to be minus 8. Now this is important because it tells us that this is not a factor of this cubic. We can't uh, write this as... Uh, this times a quadratic because we've got a constant left over. So to interpret this, it tells us that this fraction, so this divides wholly into it, so we have this quadratic, so we have x squared minus x plus 2. But we also have this remainder, which it doesn't divide into, so we have minus 8 divided by x plus 5. So this is what this division is telling us. So we can't think about dividing normally with numbers, we have this would be like the whole part, the integer part, and this is kind of the fraction, the leftover bit. So again, we can think about this in a slightly different way. If we multiply um, both sides by x plus 5, it tells us it's kind of a sort of, not a complete factorization, but it's some sort of factorization. We have this cubic, x cubed plus 4x. Uh, this is a minus, uh, minus 3x plus 2. So this equals x plus 5 times this quadratic, our answer which is x squared minus x plus 2, minus 8. So this cancels, the x plus 5 cancels. So we see we factorize this cubic as a linear term times of quadratic, but we've got this remainder, this constant, which we can't factorize. So this is what it means to have a remainder that isn't 0.